come back before you for your next promotion. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Make it plain, Apostle. Make it plain. Come on. Preach God with you. Yes, I'm preaching, Holy Ghost. I'm preaching. What happens? Yeah. When the experience pops up that you used to be a habit for you. Come on. But God says, I use it to get you here. Now I need you to use it to take it further. What do you do? The only part you play is what decision you make. Amen. Amen. That's true. That's true. Thank you, Lord. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Now here's the deal. From what perspective do I stand to make my decision? Do I stand from the gospel of the church or the gospel of my God? Because the church gospel tells me you can't do that. Grace tells me you got to be processed. Make it plain, Apostle. Make it plain. Go ahead. Go ahead. The gospel of righteousness tells me I am in workmanship. He is processing my life. But the church tells me you can't eat that chocolate. It's not good for you. That's why I love Paul. Please don't say to me, Paul, I know I can't eat chocolate. But I still desire chocolate. And every now and then I still eat chocolate. And I know I'm anointed. You're not saying nothing. I know I'm gifted. I know I'm talented. So now I have to look at my perspective. General love stated me. I got to look at my perspective. How am I seeing this thing? How does this decision affect me personally? And what effect does it have on my destiny? Because God preached on me. Let me slow down. I don't want to preach. I just want to talk to you. The experiences are predestined. Charles, I'm taking you to that war right here. But when you get right here, you have to deal with something. When you get right there, you have to deal with something. When you get right there, you have to deal with something. And these experiences are predestined. And the only thing that's going to be important to you, Charles, when you step here and experience what your decisions are going to be, how you going to look at yourself in this experience, are you going to see yourself as failure or process? How are you going to look, oh, how are you going to look at yourself right here? What decision are you going to make? Because the only thing pertinent is the decision you make. Amen. Amen. And what happens at those times? When you want to make a decision not to, but you still do it. Come yes, on. God. Come on. come on. Right there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Help right there. Oh, wow. oh yeah. Never had those. Oh, you know why you still do it, Michelle? It was predestined for you to do it. Yes. Y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all yes, ain't ready for this. The reason why Paul say I'm doing what I hate. And I've been trying to tell the man yesterday, until you have to deal with a love spirit, you will never understand what I'm talking That's about. True. All of y'all who perfect and holy and your rats holy and stuff, you, this, this is not for you. Until you have to deal with a spirit of obsession yes. and something that drives you where you don't want to go, yes. you will never understand what I'm talking about. You will sit around and judge people. You will sit around and judge yourself. You will be condemned. You will be guilty. But until you get like Paul was as he wrote the Bible, he said, Charles, I'm doing what I hate. So something is going on here. Something is bigger than me here. It's something inside of me that's driving me. And I asked God to take it away from me. And he said, no. My ability to perfect you is there. Yes. That's what my grace is, Paul. In your weakness, I'm still going to do it. Yes. Boy, y'all ain't hear me preaching this. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So when I'm in the experience, Michelle, I got to make a decision now. How is this going to affect my personal life? How is it going to affect my health? How is it going to affect my family? How is it going to affect my ministry? How is it going to affect my finances? Y'all ain't talking to me. I'm preaching so good here, man. If the experience is there now, I couldn't help going there because it's eternal. I didn't think I'd ever be back here again in my life. But this was on the eternal plan of God for me. See, you got to stop telling yourself the devil brought it. Because the devil can't bring nothing into God's eternal plan. He shows up in the experience to try to convince you he got something to do with it, but he can't make it happen. Amen. Make it plain, Apostle. Make that plain. So now, what perspective do I gain me here? Do I look at this that I'm saved or I'm trying to be saved? Come on, saved. Go ahead, go ahead. Because if I'm saved, I know there's now therefore no condemnation. Yes. But I'm trying to be saved. Oh, Jesus, I'm preaching good. If I'm helping you this morning, say amen. Amen. 
See, in the gift of eternal life, it is not possible that the enemy can introduce an experience that is not already on the journey. The journey cannot be changed. However, what he will do is try to get you to put your focus on yourself. Yes. Boy, it's good teaching. Yes. You know, you got to start reading these things a little bit more. You see, what he did with Jesus to be just, he tried to put his focus on him. You hungry. That's what he told him. He prayed. You want power? I give it to you. But see, thank God that Jesus showed me that he was on a mission and on an eternal plan. Yes. And he trusted the plan of God so much Jesus. that no matter if he was in the wilderness or on the cross, he was not going to pick up another agenda. Yes. He was not going to feel sorry for himself. He was not going to try to fix anything. He, yes. he humbled himself until being obedient to the oh, I'm talking too good. Yes. Being obedient to the death of the cross. He didn't try to fight with them who were fighting him. He didn't try to convince nobody or nothing. He just kept on walking. Genuine love. Are you walking with me here? I'm talking to somebody. You just got to keep on walking in the promise. You got to trust God to perform it. Jesus is your example. No matter what the devil hit him with, he kept walking. No matter how they rejected him, he kept walking. He never tried to explain. He never tried to do nothing. Else. So he showed me that he never can't put nothing on his plan. He will try to take what I got to go through and try to beat me into discouragement. Amen. Amen. Keep walking. Somebody, hold on, I'm going to keep walking. What you ever try to do is get you to put all your focus on yourself and what you are going through in the experience and take your focus off a of hope of your promise. I already said that. Man, this is so good. I shouldn't have to preach about nothing else. Listen to what I'm telling you. Is it a trick? Is it a deception of the devil? When you go in the midst of stuff, you're dealing with human failure. And I don't care. The preacher will have to deal with me on this. We all have human failure. Yes. If you could be perfect, Jesus would never come. Right. Not only you deal with human failure, you deal with the failure of other people. Yes. They're betraying you. Yes. They're lying on you. They're deceiving you. Yes. They're talking about you. Yes. They're rejecting you. They're doing all these things. But in the midst of all that, God is saying, and not only you have to deal with you and them, now you have to deal with the devil. Yes. Who's trying to deceive you? Who attacking you on every side? You have to deal with that. All of that is designed, please hear me, Boy, if I ever preach a message to Demetrius, I'm preaching right now. It's all designed to take your hope. Yes, because when you use, when you lose hope, you lose focus. That's why I tell you, people who are around you and everybody business, they need to focus on their hope. On, if they have time to talk about you, their focus is wrong. If they have time to talk about what's going on in your house, their focus is wrong. If they have time to talk about who you're going with, who you're sleeping with, their focus is wrong. Because the enemy has already deceived them and they've lost their hope. Yes, so now they're going around as busy bodies getting other man's affairs. Yes, because they've lost their hope. Am I preaching good here? When you lose your hope, the whole plan of the devil, Shemika, is to get you to be hopeless. Yeah. Come on. Because when you lose your hope of your promise, you start focusing on you and everybody else. When hope is lost, faith is dead. That's, right. That's what I have written here. They show the child of God doesn't become what experience do I make? Do I plan to believe God? Or do I stand? Ah, I'm done with ah, you have a That's the message this morning. But all the things that God's got going on with me, and I have some assignments at the end of this month to go some places. And deliver word. And I, you know, I thought this word was it, but I know that's two weeks away. Somebody say amen. amen. When you deal with revelation, you don't know what's going to come tomorrow. But what I want to do is get us focused as a ministry, first of all. And, and then get us focused as an individual. See, because many of us, and not only this church, and church at large, I talk to pastors, many of us have become hopeless. Come on. Watch this. Sometimes, boy, I'm teaching good. Talk to me, Holy Spirit. That's why God gives us people and patterns to follow. Amen. Because sometimes your hope will betray you. Amen. So what you do is you go to the Bible and see what do you do when that happens. And the blessing of Abraham, I'm teaching good, y'all. The Bible says he against hope, believed in hope according to what was promised. So when the enemy hits you with everything, the things that hopeless, you still have the promise. Right. So if the only thing you have to hope in is the promise, you win it. Mm -hmm. God, I don't know how to get this out of me. Can I testify? There's a